Uh, Generation Frexit, okay, uh, is taking inspiration from both uh, the vote leave and uh, uh, the Brexit party in this country. It's a new political party in France, and it is headed by Charles Henri Galois, who is president of Generation Frexit. And uh, Charles Henri joins us now. Um, Charles Henri, good evening to you. I hope I got your name right. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, it's right. Charles Henri, it's, it's okay. Thank you. Oh. Um, okay, well, listen, lovely to have you on the show tonight. As you know, we've already taken that step, one step yeah. beyond, and left the European Union. Do you think people in France are feeling the same way? Well, maybe, you know, the Eurosceptic feeling in France was not uh, as uh, spread as it was in the UK. But let's say that France, you had some Eurosceptic moments, because if you look at the last referendum that we had about the European Union in 2005, we have only 55% against uh, this new treaty against the European Union. So I think uh, the issue in France is... Many, many issues that we have, it, it can be economic, it can be social, is definitely linked with the euro on the European Union Treaty. But the people in France, they don't like the politics as it's, uh, as it's done yeah. in France. They, they understand now, or let's say that they feel that whether they vote for right or left, that's mm. exactly the same policies and the policies are decided uh, within the, the European Union. So I think if we can have really uh, a proper referendum and in generation Frexit, we're advocating for Frexit referendum as you, as you had in the UK. I think if we have this proper referendum, this proper debate, you will have the European Union mayor at the center of the political game. And the issues that you have in France based on the, the uh, electoral system you you have you know uh, the the vote on the, the first run the second run and you will have many topics you will have uh, economics agriculture and the European Union which is central will be only one topic within the other it's not at mm. the center of the political game I think if we have a referendum about it a clear referendum whether you want or not to stay in the European Union. I think we, we can win it because, you know, I was talking about 2005. At the beginning of the campaign, the first poll were giving uh, the yes at uh, 69%. And we had a campaign, we had a debate, and at the end of the debate, the no had won at 55%. So I think it should mm. be the same. Maybe Frexit is not over uh, 50% right now, but I think if we have a proper debate about the European Union, about what it involves on whether or not the French want to take back control, I think if you, if you explain yeah. it that way, yeah. the French eventually will decide to take back control. So. Do you think uh, President Macron actually understands this uh, huge feeling of, uh, of anti European. I mean, in this country, I'm. I get the feeling that we think of the European Union, uh, Charles Henri, as a, a, a want-to-be empire that they wish to have an empire where we all lose our independent feelings and culture. Do you agree? I agree, but you know, both countries, uh, France and the UK, we have been uh, empire, but it was at least empires led by ourselves. <laughs> if European Union is an empire, it's an empire which is dominated by Germany. So <laughs> actually, I don't <laughs> think that the UK and France want this. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, the politicians themselves, a lot of politicians are very keen on the European Union, aren't they? Even mm. here in Britain, there are still lots of politicians who think we should have stayed within the EU. I think that these people are very old-fashioned and actually they don't understand how globalization is working. Because if you look at uh, it and you, you don't put any uh, feeling or dream about uh, Europe and so on, you just look at how is it working. First, as you said, it's an empire, it's anti-democratic and then Hmm. Even let's say it's anti-democratic, but it's uh, it's working. Maybe some people would like to to uh, to go on with it. Hmm. 
Yeah. But it's not working and it won't work because at the 21st century, it's totally stupid to say we are 27 and for every field, every uh, aspect of the political life, yep. we will apply yep. the galaxy the same way. But you have 27 different countries. The supranational organization, it's never working. What is working? It's the international cooperation. Mm. And I can tell you that we will have cooper international cooperation with the UK and other countries after the European Union because we had international cooperation mm. uh, before the European Union. And w why uh, international cooperation is working? Because you just agree on one specific field or one specific yeah. topic yeah. where you share the same interest and you do this together. It was the case, for example, for Airbus or Ariane. It was not at all a European Commission project. It was just France, Germany, and UK. As I said, mm. within the aircraft industry, I think we can have some common interests and we can build this together and we have done it. And you don't need a European Commission to do it. You don't need a European Court of Justice. You yep. don't need all the supranational organization to do international cooperation. Exactly, or exactement. Uh, exactly. The, the, the European Union is trying to take over all the individual nations of Europe, and in doing that, they're going to try and make Britain pay. So it's going to look to France and Italy and, and Germany and Spain and all the other European nations when we are going to do this deal that hopefully we conclude tomorrow, although a lot of people think it'll be kicked down the road, mm. the European Union is going to try and make Britain pay uh, by, by trying to make us look stupid. Do you think that this will then turn off a lot of French people from supporting your point of view? I think that's exactly what they're trying to do because if you are... Uh, rational, you look at the, the trade balance, for example, between both uh, sides. You 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 need rationally to have a deal uh, with uh, with the UK because for France it's a 12 billion uh, trade surplus, with Germany it's even more. But the European position was not rational; it was not to have a win-win relationship. They wanted, as a mafia or sect, you know, that want to punish the members that want to take back his freedom. And they do it, why they are doing uh, this way? Because they fear that the other country will follow the UK example. So I hope you will leave. Better if you have a, a good deal, but if it's a, if it's a no deal, it's better that, uh, than a bad deal. And I think and we, I hope that Brexit will be a success because if Brexit is a success first, it's a huge message for freedom and democracy across the mm. continent. And then it will uh, definitely uh, show the way to the different citizens, the, the different European countries. And actually, the, there was there was a poll about it, and it was uh, the question was, uh, would you like to leave the European Union within five years uh, if uh, Brexit uh, is doing well? And the two countries uh, where the yes was. Uh, almost a majority, almost 50%. Uh, it was Italy and France. And actually, I think that if Brexit is a success, the two next countries that may follow, and we are working yeah. uh, for this in France, it's uh, Italy and France. So uh, we are definitely uh, with you on this side of the channel, and uh, we hope you, you will have a, a good deal and it will be, it will be okay after. But it's more difficult for you to leave, isn't it, because of your land borders and because you were an original member, and basically France is second in command, isn't it, in the EU? Yeah, yeah, that, 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 uh, that's right. We, but, uh, you know, if uh, it's a basic management uh, tool, if uh, you are mm -hmm. in a project, you're investing in a project, and this project you see that it's a failure, yeah. the most rational thing is to uh, is to stop it. But you have a lot of farmers, of, uh, don't you? To do it. A lot of farming subsidies. A lot of farming subsidies. Yes, but at the end, uh, you know, France it's a net contributor. So and it will be uh, worse after Brexit and after. Uh, that they decided to increase against yeah. the European Union budget despite of Brexit. We had like uh, 8 million net contribution to the UK, even if we receive uh, mm. farming subsidies. We pay much more to the EU than we receive, and it will yeah. go 
until uh, in 2021 we will pay 13 billion more than Ooh. what we receive. So we yeah. definitely <laughs> need to live, even if you don't look at the democratic uh, point of view, if you look at the economic point of view, you can uh, talk about the uh, European Union budget, which, which is a nightmare for France, and the recovery fund, which is a total disaster for France, who will pay 80 billion and we will receive only 40 billion. And it's always the same with the European Union. For France or the UK, you, you pay more, but it's not only this. Mm -hmm. You pay more, but they will decide what you have to do with the funds that you receive, which mm. is your money. It's a total craziness. So at the, the economic point of view, we, we, need to, we need to live also. The problem, uh, Charles Henri, is that uh, in France, the farming community is a very, very powerful community. They, they can block roads, they can stop food, and they do this uh, because the, the people who work within agriculture in France do benefit greatly from being in the European Union. Um, but if you think about it, actually, the majority, if you quite rightly say, the majority of people in France don't. But the French farmers could cause an enormous amount of problems, couldn't they? Uh, I don't think so, because, uh, as I said, we pay more than we receive. So the subsidies that they receive they will receive it after the European Union, but we will have more money to spend on other fields. Because you, you, and they will receive it much more quickly and in a less bureaucratic way that is uh, currently uh, uh, in, in the European Union. Basically, for the UK, you have seen it. You, you have uh, Brexit, and then the UK government has, uh, has said to the farmers in the UK that they will give them the same subsidy that they had with the uh, agriculture uh, political uh, uh, side. So it will be basically the same. If you are a net contributor, mm. you can give exactly the same amount, the same fund to your people, and you will have even more money, and you will decide on your own what you want to do with this money. So it's, it's not an issue. And I think that the farming community also in France Maybe they're still seeing that the EU gives them money, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a French money. But they also see all the negative side of the European Union. And you, you have seen that the European Union has signed many uh, trade agreements, free trade agreements, with some region of the world where they don't have at all the same social or economic standards. So it's a, it's a difficult Mm. Uh, competition for the French farmers, so th they all see, see this side, you know, of the of the drawbacks of the of the EU for them. So I think okay. it won't be really an issue. Finally, one last question, uh, Charles Henri, if I may: Do you think that companies in Br in France will try to continue to trade favorably with Britain, even if the EU tries to stop them? Yeah, I think so. If you if you look at the investment flows, you see that there are still investment flows from France to the UK, for example. And I don't know uh, any uh, uh, French uh, um, wine company <laughs> that say, oh, because of Brexit, I, I won't, I won't, I won't, you know, export wine to the UK. Well, I won't want to export champagne to the UK. And cheese. I'm sure the cheese. And cheese. Yeah, yeah. The, cheese. The, the, the trade will, will continue. <laughs> and uh, the, on the both sides of the channel, you will have trade anyway, even if the UA wants to do uh, some blockade, let's say, the French uh, wine industry will still uh, sell uh, wine <laughs> to the UK. And cars, of course, cars as well. We will still yeah. sell yeah. whiskey to French people. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There won't be any. <laughs> And the issue of the reality at the end, policy is reality. So you can be in your European Union fantasy, but at the end, I think that the economic interests will, uh, will mm. overcome this. Uh, Charles Henri, keep us up to date with how you're doing as far as Frexit is concerned. And uh, for the moment, thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, Charles Henri Galois, who's president of Generation Frexit.